What's up? The John Candy. How you guys doing? Good. How you doing, good, man? Good. Doing all right, man. Doing great. I have my first question is why is John in parentheses? <laughs> That's actually, I, I honestly like a don't know. Thing, right? Wasn't it or something? It's, so there's a band from Brazil called the John Candy. Oh. And um, I guess just when we just were messing with it to differentiate ourselves. No, but we had it before we found out about that band because we existed before they did. Oh, did we? Oh, yeah. Oh. Good. Yeah, so I, I, I don't think, even know. <laughs> I think, I feel like, because we started the band back in like, dude, 2004. Like it was Brent's Holy idea. Shit. Yeah, Brent's idea. He brought in Eric, and uh-huh. then they well, brought in me because we were in another metalcore band. Well, there was a third guy, Gil. Oh, wait, I, he was involved too. Gil was doing like recording. Yeah, Gil was like, and oh, then right. yeah, so yeah. Gil was like the original, and then I just came in Mixer, after. So I'm not probably. even technically an original. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we were like in a metalcore band called Insolitas. So like, I was vocals, uh, Eric was drums, Brent was bass. And we were like, let's do like a like an old school like hardcore throwback kind of band, um, with all with movie quotes, so like all John Candy movie quotes specifically. Uh-huh. And I think when when the guys came up with the name, I think we did the parentheses just because we didn't just want it to just straight be the John Candy. Uh-huh. And we were just like, let's throw some parentheses in there. Like I I don't I literally don't think there was anything like crazy or yeah. kind of that interesting about it. <laughs> no, that, no, it was cool. That that was just like the first thing I saw. I was like, why is the John John in parentheses but no that definitely makes sense um so another thing we met technically through our friend tim nieto which we've met i've mentioned on my show so many times how did you guys meet him and or where to so we actually met him at our second show ever we've only played two shows um Mm. and he actually just showed up randomly because he was a fan of the band uh so he brought a bunch of his friends and uh, they all came and they went absolutely ape shit for the show. Like <laughs> the stuff like dreams are made of for like it, it, being in a heavy band. You just want yeah. people to lose their minds to your music. Yeah. And they went insane. And after we talked to him for like an hour, oh, and, of they were, and Tim and everyone were just super cool guys. Um, that was my perspective on it. I don't know if you guys had different uh, interaction with Tim or anything like that. No, no I, I just mean, saw him going nuts. We didn't really know anything about him when we played, and then. When we finished, I think we all went over there and we're like, "Dude, you guys are freaking awesome!" Yeah, <laughs> his buddy, his buddy almost punched me in the face like six times. Oh yeah, during the show. <laughs> Do you, yeah. who was his friends that he brought? I assume the, I was probably like Travis and maybe yeah, like, Travis, yeah, 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 yeah. Because all those dudes, like, I've been going to shows with Tim ever since 2007. That's when I met him. When he used oh, to play man. drums for his old band called Fight the Fall. I'm pretty sure maybe he's mentioned it before, yeah. but. I met him through just the local music scene. We, I saw their the, uh, his band play a bunch of times, and you know, I met all of his friends. All of his friends are literally the most amazing people. Some of the best memories I have are with him and his friends from Huntington Beach. Um, so, and we just stayed friends, literally still to this day. And one of the things that I assume with you guys and him is his love for classic movies like from the 80s the 90s oh, yeah. the 70s all horror that kind of movie, stuff especially movies, like, when it comes to horror movies that's like oh, yeah. that's his shit when i first met him i wasn't really into horror movies i'm a little bit more into him now but like i assume you guys kind of all really really like got close to him because of the love you all have for movies obviously because in your guys's songs you you guys just straight up use like all movie samples yeah yeah totally well, yeah 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 uh, uh I mean, everything's a sample, technically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you hit Every- the nail. Yeah, no, yeah, you hit. Yeah, no, sorry, I know what you wanted to say. Go ahead. Yeah, like literally, the only thing uh, proprietary is technically his vocal. Okay. Uh, everything is a sample. Um, every snare, every kick, every cymbal hit, every guitar. Strum, every bass. The guitars like, are sampled too. Yeah, everything's sampled. Okay, so how does that how does that work then? Because that that I didn't know that. I thought the at least the guitars and the vocals and the drums. I thought that was all original material. Uh, no. Um, so technically, uh, like I'll take a song, uh, I I chop it up into a million pieces. Uh, oh, wow. I, slow it down, speed it up. I slow it down, yeah, speed pitch it up. Shift it. Uh, change the pitch. That's change wild. The key. Um, I'll I'll splice together like six songs from an album that are all in the same key. Um, oh. Yeah. It's kind of that's just 
Yeah. And, I mean, this whole thing's been a a learning curve. Yeah. Because uh, the first releases sound like, I mean, and we could say it now, they sound like pure shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's kind of just like a, a learning on the fly thing. No, that's cool. Um, but, I, I mean, I will say that the the album we're planning to release... In December is probably I, I I'm never proud of the songs I I usually hate them all but the, these are like uh, I'm 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 saying these are sounding good. Yeah, Eric is a, Eric's like the, the mad scientist. Like I always say, he's like the the main brain behind the band uh-huh. um, because he just he just comes up with these crazy ass ideas and just throws things together. And he's like and and his his goal is to make it sound like it's a real band. And I think with each release, he succeeds more and more. And uh, it's, it's just, it's really awesome and interesting to see the progression from where we started to where we are now, where it's like, when people learn that everything, everything is sampled, they're like, what? Like they can't, their brain can't even process it. Yeah. They're just like, it sounds like a real band. That, 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 was, a, that was something that I was going to ask too, is like, is that like common knowledge? Like, does everybody know that's like what you guys do? Oh. Well, I don't think they know that till they see us play. They're like, we're, like one guy came from like Santa Clarita, and he's oh, like, yeah. "Where's like the amps and guitars?" We're like, "No, dude, <laughs> this is all ran through speakers and a laptop." <laughs> so, so there is I no so because like I have I've never seen you guys play. I watched the Hate Five Six video because um, Brandon showed me it, and uh, I didn't know yeah. Hate Five Six covered you guys, which is fucking. By the way, amazing. Sunny yeah. is oh, totally fucking random. incredible. Yeah. But um, 100%. yeah, you guys. So you guys played at program for the one show that he covered. Did uh, where was the the other show you guys played at? Same place. Program, program. also. Uh, also program. <laughs> okay, for sure. And the That's reason a great that, place. Oh, absolutely. That's our favorite place to play. And uh, Eric actually is the reason that Sonny came to that show. Like, do oh, you no tell him that story oh, real quick? Um, he posted a flyer about um a fest he was going at to in Garden Grove. Oh and, yeah yeah yeah. And I. I randomly hit him up and I was like, oh, are you coming? Because um, he was specifically going to see this band that our friend Isaac was the vocalist of. Mm-hmm. And w- the show we played at a program. Yeah, and wait, quick interjection. Yeah. Isaac is like, like he's the dude who actually got us playing shows. Oh, yeah, and yeah. He's in like a bunch of classic hardcore bands, I think. Is it A18? Yeah. Chorus, Chorus of Disapproval, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Chorus of Disapproval. Very cool. Yeah, and then he has a side project called um, uh, Count Catastrophic. So mm-hmm. he got us into like playing shows just in general. Yeah, but sorry, because our, our go- we were never gonna play a show. Our, our the goal was just to release. How did he find you? Just randomly on? Oh, he uh, on Instagram. Instagram. He, just, Instagram. he yeah. heard us and he loved the Home Alone song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was how we started our friendship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so Sonny was specifically going to this ve- uh, fest to see Isaac's band. Okay. So when I told him, hey, are you coming on Sunday? He was like, I don't know what's on Sunday. And I was like, well, Isaac's side project is debuting. I show. He was like, and he asked me, are you in a band and are you playing? And I was like, well, yeah. Uh, and I sent him a clip. The, we had just released a clip of um, Hooter. The oh, Hooter yeah, Hooter Ate the Map, or Michael Jackson song. Yeah, okay. so I, I sent him the video teaser, and he loved the idea of like michael jackson and the head like so he was like yeah i wish i could go but i'm actually flying out the next day and i was Uh like no worries cool nice talking to you Uh, i was like love your channel period yeah we show up to program and there he is he changed his flight just to see it like that's so fucking sick dude because he said he checked out the rest of our page and he came just to hang out and film dude that is fucking awesome i want to meet that guy dude Super cool dude, uh, number one. Number two, massive for the hardcore scene and what he's doing. Absolutely uh, massive. And number yes. three, people only know who we are because of him. Like I, I even remember at the end of the second show that we played, our only uh, the second show we've ever played, uh, Tim and all his buddies and us, we were all chanting something like, like, hey, five, six, hey, five, six, or something, like because nobody knew who we were until he posted our video. I mean, it's all like AI algorithms and everything, like how yeah. his videos get posted. Mm-hmm. And I think our video only got posted because I upvoted it and maybe one other person upvoted it. But he's always like rallying with, with the people who follow him, just like, 
You guys have to upvote the videos. I don't decide who gets played. You decide who gets yeah, played. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's pretty funny. Like, people still don't realize that about what he does. And so our video got posted, and the, the response was just crazy. Like, I was, yeah. like, <laughs> DMing people back on Instagram for, like, a week straight. And they're just like, what is this? Like, this is crazy. Like, I've never seen or heard of anything like this. And, um, yeah, that was just, like, that was by far the coolest and, and best thing that's happened for us uh, as a band. And that was now, what, a year ago? A few years year and ago. A half ago two years like ago. That? that was the first Oh, thing. shit. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. Wild. That's fucking amazing. <laughs> no, it seriously yeah, is very, very cool. Uh, mm -hmm. So how did all three of you guys, or however many of you there were before, how did you guys all meet? Did you guys meet through the local music scene too, going to shows, all that kind of stuff? Same deal? Well, so I think, I I think, did I meet? No, I met Eric first because of our old metalcore band. Mm -hmm. um, our mutual friend I went to college with. And so uh, he brought Eric in as the drummer for this band we were starting. Cause, I, uh, I answered an ad on Craigslist. And it happened to be you guys went to high school together. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. And then I randomly met Brent on MySpace. <laughs> Oh my god! And like we just like we just thought each other seemed cool, so we were like, "Hey, let's hang out, dude." <laughs> and it was just like this dirty secret, like the fact that we met on yeah. MySpace. Like, what the hell was wrong <laughs> with <laughs> us? <laughs> but Chapman too. We were at Chapman for a year or two. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What what uh what high schools did you guys all go to? Uh, I went to Orange Lutheran in Orange. Mm, okay. uh, I went to El Medina in Orange. Uh -huh. I went to uh, Servite High School. Oh, nice. Very yeah. cool. So you so you all live in Orange then? Yeah, like yeah. I, I, Anaheim. Anaheim, yeah. well, Orange Berlin, area. All adjacent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wait. Okay. So, are your masks? They're all, are they John Candy? No, we wish that was oh, the okay. original vision. It's close. Can you kind of see who else? <laughs> yeah, that. Be? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so it's fucking okay. So uh, what? The, 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 <laughs> got it. I got it now. <laughs> No, it's so the closest this, thing, I well, think. Yeah, well, the story behind the mask is that we always knew if we were going to play a show, it needs to be entertaining, fun, theatrical. Yeah. Like, we're thinking, like, guar kind of stuff, right? Definitely, um, definitely. It can be just, like, because that's the whole entire purpose of this band is just for it to be fun. Like, this isn't, like, our career. We just love doing it, and yeah. it's, like, a side thing for all of us. And if it becomes more, great. If not, no worries. We're having a great time doing it. Absolutely. And so, we were like, if we're going to start a band, uh, you know, and, and play shows, let's be crazy, whatever. So we're like, we got to have masks. And then I think we like, we were randomly back in 2004, we made a design that was like John Candy's face. And then we're like, I was like, let's Terminator it. And so like, we just threw, made half black, did a red eye, like kind of like the Terminator, right? Yeah. Um, and then fast forward to 2017, we're like, we're going to start playing shows because we didn't do anything for like all those years between 2005 and 2017. Um, yeah. And so... Uh, we just like with this make John candy mask we looked up like fat guy masks and stuff like that and couldn't yeah. really find anything that was like reasonably priced so we're like uh, Trump masks are insanely cheap you get them for like 20, <laughs> 20 bucks on Amazon there's like 45 million options so oh, yeah. we did that we're like bicycle light for the eye for the, the Terminator eye um, and then we were just like I think I remember Eric talking about like some there were some old hard old school hardcore bands that had like similar uniforms like hoodies they waved flags and stuff what was that oh, band? Was there Shockwave yeah, oh, and uh, Mateau, and Mateau yeah. the pirate band. The pirate I remember band. them back in the day. The Locusts. Yeah, the Locusts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So very heavily influenced by all those bands. Oh, definitely, and it definitely, definitely adds a little bit of a, of a theatrical image to to. I love when bands like have like like a not necessarily a uniform, but just a very cohesive like look to them. And I yeah, I love yeah. the I love the fact that you guys do that, but and you guys describe yourself on Spotify as nostalgia core, which. I love that. Who coined that term? <laughs> well, that's Who doesn't love nostalgia? I mean, to like think love back it. to the good old days. I mean, it's awesome. It's yeah, it's the best. And and so, uh, what is your guys' favorite John Candy movie? Ooh, uh, I'm gonna question. go with Uncle Buck. Okay, I would actually. I can watch that nonstop. It's a fucking great movie. <laughs> Twenty times a day. Yeah, no, I'm the same. I'm yeah. Sorry, sorry, same. No, I I like uh, the Great Outdoors. Great Outdoors. Is okay. Great. Mine is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Oh, I mean, yeah. that's second place. <laughs> Another one. I fucking love that movie. Tim actually showed me that movie like a few years ago because I, I literally have never seen that movie. And like, I think it was like Christmas time a few years ago. One one thing that me and Tim like to do is every holiday, every Halloween and, and, uh, and Christmas, we usually try to get together and watch our favorite like holiday movies around those times. So like every Christmas Eve, we are, no, not every Christmas Eve, every Christmas like 
time, like a couple weeks before, we'll watch National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, you guys definitely should do a song off of that movie if you guys haven't <laughs> seen it. How are we not? Oh, wait, we did, right? We did, no, we did, we did, we did, yes, we was, did. Uh, we vacation. did Vacation. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mixed them up. That was yeah. the first, that was the first song. That was the first album. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When w- guitars were actually recorded. Yeah, with Chevy. Oh, oh yeah, back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Because we yeah. did a three-song EP back in 2004. Okay. Just like, it was actual guitars. Brent was actually playing the guitars. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was still electronic drums, but it sounded very electronic drums. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, it sucked. It was terrible, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I, but we did throw in some Dumb and Dumber quotes from back then. Uh-huh. Um, we th- we threw in the part I think when like Jeff Daniels is taking a dump. Oh my um, god, dude! Screaming on the toilet. Yeah, and there, there was another quote we threw in too. I think. Uh, bartender cripes. Oh yeah, bartender cripes and uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, 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 the whole like fight yeah, scene yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, uh, so since this is part of my Billy Sour podcast, which uh, I usually like to talk to my friends or people that I'm talking to about the things that kind of annoy us in the world, uh, just a little bit of what's frustrating, what you guys are seeing in the world today, like what's kind of been bothering you, you know, what are some things within the past, you know, I, you know, I don't want to say the past like year because let's be honest, this year fucking sucks. <laughs> absolutely. This year fucking <laughs> absolutely sucks. <laughs> but since this year does suck, what is it that you guys have been seeing? Hold on a second. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, I'm doing an interview. <laughs> Mom, I need some meatloaf. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> meatloaf. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> um. No, I mean, yeah. well, I mean, to your point, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of really serious stuff happening in the world. So Absolutely, it's like, yes. right now, I think, I think it'd be funny to hear about just like the random, like dumb shit that bothers us. And I'm going to point right at Eric because Eric, no. the things that bother Eric are like the funniest things but ever. Now I'm like on the spot. I don't know. <laughs> No, dude, you, the, when girls wear certain kinds of boots, it bothers you. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> or, or like certain kinds se- of boots? See? Like, like, for example, even just the sound flip-flops make. Oh, yeah. oh my S- fucking S- God. S- like, S- I fucking hate flip-flops, dude. Oh, yeah, I tried to do that. I'm wearing flip-flops right now. Oh, my God. I was about to say, I hate when dudes wear flip-flops. Okay, okay, they're both wearing flip-flops right now. Oh, my God. 66.6% of us are in <laughs> Oh, yeah, since COVID started, I work flip-flops like 90% of the time so I don't have to go anywhere. <laughs> and that and with, with like, COVID, like, you guys, like, w- were your guys' like, jobs affected by this? Like, kind of, like, ever since this whole thing started, like, what have, what have you guys been doing? Like, I, like, musically, are you guys, like, you guys are still, like, doing what you can just like put out some content so that well, people so can like there was a show yeah well see so, yeah, a couple big things that yeah, we were we were planning uh two or three local shows and we were going to be flying to philadelphia because we ran a contest on our instagram that basically said you know if you win this contest we're going to co- come play your house and uh okay. the dude who won is a big fan um and he uh he said hey you guys can't play my house because it would probably be a little too crazy but i have a rad little place called the snake pit in philly and yeah. uh you guys can come play there and we're like hell yeah we had our tickets booked and everything like we were we mm. were full bore tim was coming too yeah and oh, of course. Uh, <laughs> then covid sta- started we had to cancel it we pushed it back canceled again so it's gonna yeah. happen when all the covid nonsense is done uh, but yeah. because all that happened uh we were like well what do we do now uh Dude, let's write another album, and which was kind of funny and weird of us because we literally just released our first full length in February. Yeah. And, but Eric would just like was just all of a sudden got super inspired. Lots of crazy cool. stuff going on in the world. I, I would say this album is a potpourri of uh, unemployment, <laughs> um, cabin yeah. fever, uh, boredom, and toilet paper. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> like. Because I mean, I lost. Because I work in travel, so oh, okay. Uh, I've been off since March, and I probably okay. I was told I probably won't go back till December, maybe January. So what, what? What the three jobs you guys had prior to the pandemic? You said you work in travel. What does that mean? Like you? Uh, I do corporate travel for Louis Vuitton. 
Oh shit! Look at you. <laughs> so he's doing good stuff. <laughs> Louis Vuitton. <laughs> got the OV so do you get a right do you get a fat discount on anything? Zero. <laughs> oh, what a bunch of fucking cocksuckers! Right? Yeah. They, they give you nothing. Zero wow. discount. What the about best, the so the rest of you? What do you guys do for, well, for work? What I want to say real quick: the best mm. thing about Eric working with that level of person, we'll call it or whatever in quotes, is yeah. like let's just be honest: like a lot of these people are not the nicest people. They don't treat people very well. Yeah. Eric is so good <laughs> at just like you could be screaming in Eric's face, and he's just dead behind the eyes, just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyway, so could we get this done? Like I wish I could do that. I'm emotional. I'd be like, ah! no, I freaked the <laughs> yeah. fuck out, dude. Oh, same, same. I can't. Can't do that shit, man. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm uh, I'm an IT manager, so I, I've been doing nerd shit for 15 years. Mm-hmm. Um, that's that's my trade, and we're doing great. Our company's doing fantastic. Uh, luckily, thank God. That's good. Just yeah. despite what's going on, you guys are you're, you're still working. Yeah, you absolutely. work. For, are you remote or are you? Uh, like, yeah, I've been working remote yeah. since uh, since March, and it's great because I I was driving to LA every day from Orange County, so now I don't have to do that anymore, and I'm very happy about it. I wonder if it's going to be that way when it like all the COVID stuff is gone. It's like all the people that have been working remotely that don't have that had to commute before are going to still be doing that like post that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think I it, it's going to be this way for me at least through the end of the year. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. It just depends on how things go. Cause we've actually as a company become even more efficient uh, surprisingly. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, I mean, to, to be completely honest, it doesn't shock me that a lot of things like that are like being more efficient, not with their employees having to commute. I think it's a actually like a wonderful thing because you can go on the freeway at five o'clock at night on a Friday and there's no traffic now. Yeah, yeah. it's incredible. Because I, awesome. I work at a restaurant and I have to commute from Irvine to Fullerton and I don't have to leave an hour before my shift anymore. Now I can leave like 30 to 30 to 35 minutes, make it there on time with 10 minutes to kill still. And you're not the pissed and stressed out the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. And then Brett. Uh just working on my jump shot trying to get in the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh work for a uh family business. Uh we manufacture mm-hmm. uh food service chemicals. Okay. So I do a lot of the purchasing, inventory, buying, stuff like that. Very cool. So Very it works, cool. but yeah, uh, we get, we were affected a little bit. Um I don't know, taking 2 days off a week right now since about no. April, so Very cool. Uh that, yeah. To go so to go back to the things that annoy all of us, Eric. A lot of things annoy him. The Wait, sound what? of flip flops, the girls' uh, boots. Uh, okay, I want to yeah. tell you guys a story about. So like a couple weeks ago, I went to a family dinner in uh, San Clemente at this place called Trevor Trevor's by the tracks or Trevor's on the tracks. Have you guys oh, ever heard I've been of that there place? before? Yeah, that place is awesome. Yeah. Okay. So you know that there's the train tracks uh-huh. literally right next to the restaurant, bro. Yep. <laughs> okay. There were these two. <laughs> Like smoking hot girls, by the way, <laughs> smoking hot girls, and they were walking on the train tracks with like oh. insanely short shorts, like super hiked up, showing their fucking their ass cheeks and shit, like <laughs> strutting down the fucking train tracks and shit, like it was a fucking runway. And there was a dude with a fucking camera walking behind them, just like fuck, I, I can't believe I'm doing this. And literally everybody in the restaurant was staring <laughs> at them. Literally everybody at the restaurant was staring at them, being like the. Fuck fuck are these girls doing and i even heard i even heard one person say boy i hope they get run over by a train (laughs) (laughs) well they're on the track man i was just like fuck that was that's pretty grim but yeah that's that's brutal (laughs) that's super brutal but i was just like why why the fuck do you need an audience for something like that like yeah <laughs> like i don't know for me that's just like something that i'm just like do you really have to do this in front of an audience like you can't go 20 more feet down the way where there's nobody looking at you and by the way little kids like and their families are looking at them going like mommy what are they doing over there yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. See, Ma- the mommy fuck, daddy wh- why does daddy keep staring <laughs> <laughs> Where's daddy what, going? Well, yeah, why is daddy over there now? <laughs> why is daddy filming? Daddy? <laughs> I mean, I also don't, I don't, I know that like, you know, right now we're in a very like dark climate politically, obviously, like it's very, uh, but at the same time though, I don't want to ignore the fact that that's going on. I love to have conversations about like what, 
Okay, sorry for the technical difficulty. So what I was saying was I don't want to ignore the fact of what politically is going on in the world. I know that usually people don't like to have these types of conversations because it, the country is already so divided. And sometimes people are like, I'm afraid to speak out on what I think is right or wrong in this situation. I don't know what you guys are, you know, where your guys' head is at, but... With what's going on with how the pandemic is being politicized, the racial injustice going on in the world, what are your guys' kind of thoughts about about those topics and what do you think we as a society can do to inspire change and hope? Yeah. And, you know, like, what do you like in your guys? Because I don't know how uh, old you guys are. Um, we're, we're ageless. That's why we're the mass, dude. Next question. Fair enough. <laughs> well, the reason why the reason why I asked that is because a lot of people look at the age that somebody is, and they're just like, "Oh, well, you don't know. You're just too young. You don't understand." And I'm just yeah. like, "Bro, I'm fucking 32. I kind of like I have a grasp on life. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. it's like you can't just tell me that I'm young and naive and don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. You know what I mean? I'm yeah, a, yeah, totally. Like. Well, yeah, I mean, so th th for me, it's like, I think my biggest issue I have right now is just politics are being injected into things where they shouldn't be injected. I'm looking yeah. at the things going on right now are human fucking rights issues. And mm -hmm. people just need to, like, at the end of the day, why can't people just treat each other as equals and be a little bit nicer to each other? That's, I mean, I, I know it's an oversimplification, and it's much more yeah. nuanced and complicated than that. But I think yeah. that's the thing killing me right now is just so much being politicized. And it's being, it's left, and it's right, and it's blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, it's called being a decent human being to each other. And that that's what's just kind of killing me right now. Yeah. I agree with that. What about the other two? What do you guys are? What are your I mean, guys' I'm, thoughts on that? I mean, I'm the kind of the same way. I don't side. I've I've never been one to side with any party. I I kind of just I'm not one. I don't like anything uh, that causes like you have to pick a side. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. Absolutely, uh, no, hundred percent, dude. Like anytime someone asks me, well, what side of the political spectrum are you on? I'm like, I'm like, dude, I don't, I'm not a part of that at all. I think both sides are just not good. Like, I especially do not subscribe to the conservative side because fuck that. But yeah. you like, know, I, while I agree with a lot of the the leftist politics, I agree that there should be, you know, you know, with, I agree with climate change. We need to do something about climate change, equal rights for all citizens, whether you're black asian transgender gay you know any of those types of things i agree like healthcare, every healthcare. everybody yeah. should be yeah. treated as an equal you mm -hmm. know um, yeah absolutely but 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 at the same time i just i'm a free thinking individual and there are certain things where i i have to like kind of do my own research and kind of figure out my own thought process on certain certain subjects because i'm still learning something new every day about something going on and i'm like okay right. well so i'm not just gonna you know a lot of people read a headline on facebook and they're like yup okay well that's i'm resharing that and that's yeah. my thought and this it's like, is the well, truth automatically yeah, and that's it there's yeah. no i don't have to do any further research this is it that's that's all i have to do and to me that's just like dude you want to yeah. you you want you people keep telling people on the left oh think for yourself think for yourself and it's like I do think for myself. I don't just read a headline. I read. I do this. Right. And people will always lump myself into the category of being a liberal. And I'm like, bro, I am far yeah. from that. Yeah. I'm way too radical to be a liberal. <laughs> totally hear you. Yeah. 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 That's but, the, I think that's the big thing, too, right now is just I, I think people need to do a lot more listening and a lot less talking. Mm -hmm. um, I think the listening aspect and just taking the time to learn and understand others and uh, not like you said, like not just like going off of like some just like sensational headline or blah blah blah, but actually talking to people and let letting the, letting them just say what they had to say their piece. Like try to understand, try to empathize. I mean, these are just like basic human emotions that, that yeah. we should all be embracing. The, but the one thing that frustrates me the most is usually when a group of a group of people like us will will say our piece on certain things but the other side of that will always just say we're wrong and shut us down immediately and therefore they think okay well the conversation's over and mm -hmm. then we are like you know what at least for me when i speak to somebody and i say well here's my two cents on xyz subject here's why i think this is 
wrong and here's what I would do to change this. They don't – sometimes they'll even hear that and they're like, well, I, 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 like that. I, they don't even want to have the conversation. So that's, the, that's where I'm frustrated is where – Sometimes when I talk to people, they don't even want to be, they don't even want to hear what I have to say. So it's like, yes, you're right. We should listen to everybody. But why is it that some people just think, well, I don't have to hear what you fucking have to say. So how do, how would you guys deal with something like that when somebody doesn't want to hear something? Here's, a, here's an example. Neil deGrasse Tyson said when he tries to talk to flat earthers, for example, he'll say, well, there's photographic evidence that the earth is round. And then someone will say to him, well, that's not real. And he goes, well, at that point, I just don't even, I don't even, yeah. I don't even, I don't even, I, don't even, I can't even What's, talk to the guy. Dude, dude, it's the irony of the, this generation Check where me. it's like we have all of the information in the world, like literally at our fingertips. Mm -hmm. And we, we just, we can't seem to, to, to figure things out. It's like, like, it's like, we just we just glom onto some like simple explanation for something and, and want to discount like the years of research and schooling and whatever that the experts have done. Uh, because I, I'm Joe Schlub and I watched a five minute video on YouTube and I'm convinced I understand, I understand the earth and the fact that it's flat now. It's like, yeah, it's just this weird generation thing. Like, I don't know. I, I, I do feel like the younger generations are more willing to to speak to each other and have a discourse about stuff like that, but it's I always, think I agree with that, yeah. Yeah, the younger generations definitely do. It's the older ones. Like, when I have talks with mm -hmm. my parents, for example, I don't know if you guys ever really have, uh, you know, political conversations with your parents, but whenever I do with my parents, at least, like, they are always very willing to listen to what I have to say. Actually, my parents ask me what I think about certain subjects all the time because they want to hear my point of view. And when they give theirs you know most of the time i i listen to it i may not agree with it but i'm not gonna like disown my parents because of it and a lot of people right. are like blocking their their quote-unquote trump supporting uh you know relatives and all that kind of stuff and i'm not gonna lie i've done that too i've done mm -hmm. it. And it and it and like i don't want to but at the same time i don't want to hear the same hateful rhetoric that our president is saying coming out of somebody in my family's mouth you know right. um I had another fucking question. I lost my train of thought. Shit. Okay, yeah. So, as far as like, I know you guys like are a nostalgia band. You guys like to bring laughter to your listeners. I am definitely one of them. You guys, your music cracks me up. I love it. There are some songs <laughs> I have listened to that I haven't seen that are still good, like uh, John McClane and Maverick and Goose. Like, I still like laughed. Even though I've seen Die Hard once and I've only seen Top Gun once, like, and then they, you have a song, yeah. Benny the Jet Rodriguez. I love the Sandlot, so for uh, me that was just like a real good listen to. Um, but all the other stuff, I, I'm going to be honest, a lot of the movies you guys reference in your songs I haven't seen. But with music, would it, would you agree that? Um, and this is an age old argument that I always get in with people that aren't in bands, is that should musicians stick to music only? Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know you were, where you were going with that question because I was excited to talk about the. Uh, <laughs> I was excited to talk about the contrast of the band in the sense, like I thought you might be going there because I want to mention that that's one thing that we love about the band is that the humor aspect. We love contrasting that with the yeah. anger and the heaviness of it. Like, and that's kind of like a dichotomy that we're always playing with with the band is like is trying to balance like this is hilarious versus i want to punch somebody in the face yeah absolutely. and it's like we love playing with that and adjusting those levels as we're making songs but as far yeah. as like musicians sticking to uh you know music um like do you mean like they just be surely a source of entertainment yes and, and not give mm. their views on what is going on in the world because mm. like because like okay because like i i know that that question was worded weird and you mm -hmm. didn't know where i was going with it but like the reason why i think someone should listen to your band is because your band is essentially a movie think about it that way yeah. you watch a movie to what escape you don't want to you don't want to think about what's going on in reality so you can put on the orange county lp and you can listen to Mrs. Noogie Burger and just be like, I fucking love Dumb and Dumber and crack up and you're like, oh, oh my God. And then you you hear Benny the Jet Rodriguez and you hear John McClane and you just are like, you're transported back to a time 
when you're watching these movies and then you're like, well, you know what? Now that I just listened to this, let me watch Dumb and Dumber. Let me watch I Die mean, Hard. Cool. Let me oh, watch yeah, The totally. Sandlot. Yeah. So it's like your guys' band is a great way to, you know, and any any band, but like especially with what you guys are doing, it's a great way to escape reality and That's be like, so and, and remember that it's okay to laugh at a, at a time yeah. like this, you know? I mean, it, it's so crazy because we've labeled the band to ourselves a million things, but I don't think we've ever labeled it escapism. Yeah. Escape and it's never even occurred to me. Yeah. But, it, but it makes sense, though. It, yeah, yeah. Exactly. What you described makes 100% sense. I, it just ne- I don't, it never occurred to me. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I didn't mean to do that, but hey, <laughs> hey no, it's a good thing. It. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no. The, but basically, what I'm saying is like, so my buddy on Facebook, he, you know, he's very politically outspoken. He's, you know, <laughs> saying how the kid that shot up in Kenosha, who the 17 year old kid with the AR-15, fuck that kid. He better fucking, you know, go to prison. <clears throat> and how can people defend these types of actions? And this guy told him like hey stick to music and he's like what the fuck do you mean by that and he's like man you're just a musician like don't talk about politics like you shouldn't be talking about that kind of stuff when i i don't think anybody has ever you know said that to me just because well first off they know better and uh <laughs> and so if anybody was to ever come at you guys with that kind of stuff i don't really like you know i don't know you guys personally i mean i i feel like i, I do now but uh, but what i mean is like <laughs> If somebody were to say something like that to you guys, if you guys were talking about things and people see, oh, they're just in a band, like, why are they talking about this? They need to stick to music. If somebody were to say that to you, what would you guys have to say to that? I have a strong opinion on it. I think at the end of the day, (laughs) musicians are people and people make music. It's not robots making music. It's not like AI making music, at least yet. I'm sure that's a Black Mirror episode that's going to happen soon, (laughs) right? So it's like people have emotions, they have feelings, they have opinions. I think I personally, you guys can say whatever you want, but like I personally think it, I have no issue with it. Even if I, I disagree with them, uh, you know, they're at least speaking their mind. I mean, Fair enough. I think a lot of it is, well, yeah. I mean, through music, they want to express, you know, what they think and their opinions and stuff. I mean, you got these massive band like Rage Against the Machine, uh, oh my System God. of a Down, uh, Bad Religion. It's all... Dude, they just they use that. It's all, yeah, yeah. It's all I mean, politically it, charged. It, you know what? I think it's great. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, it could I mean, be. They could push it a little too far, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, but but like, have you guys seen the fact that people are like being like? Oh, why does Rage Against the Machine talk about politics so much? And it's like, bro, what machine do you think they're raging against? Exactly. You know what I mean? Yes. And, the, and you want to know what's crazy about System of a Down? I don't know if you guys saw this, but their drummer is like Trump is very friendly with uh, you know Muslims, and he's like a good advocate for like equality. And I'm just like, bruh, do you not yeah, listen I've, to your own band? I've been seeing that like in the last few <laughs> months. Know. He's been posting stuff. That blows my mind. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Wild. Somebody or something got to him. I, I don't know what happened, but well, I mean, that was kind of weird. It, it, it also be like, you know, like the singer of Slayer. He's uh-huh. Catholic, and he he's even said like he sees what they do as art. Yeah, and uh, just because you know he's saying the lyrics he is, or they're they're oddly enough burning crosses on stage, he views it, I guess, as an act. Yeah, um, totally. I mean, Cannibal Corpse isn't really coming blood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Fucking, they're not really taking hammers and smashing them in the faces, you know? Oh. oh, speaking of that, dude, you reminded me. Have you seen that movie? Uh, I think it's a Lars von Trier. I don't know how to say his last oh, yeah. name movie. It's called Antichrist. Oh, yeah. No. Oh, my God. The grossest scene I have ever seen in a movie. Willem mm-hmm. Dafoe. Rock to the growing, and what you just said actually happens on screen, oh. and I wanted to die. <laughs> so, um, uh, no, I have not seen that movie, and, <laughs> and now I kind of don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I love horror. That was too far. Leave the okay. man's junk alone. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about horror for for a minute, because um, you know, as somebody who is into movies as much as I am, I, I assume you guys are big cinephiles yourself. Um, what are some of your favorite horror movies within the last you know fifteen twenty years? And are you guys sick of all these be- remakes and reboots? Like, what are your guys' opinions on Saw, bro? It's gotta be Saw. <laughs> you can't you can't be Saw in the last ten or fifteen years. Yeah. That was the, the super fun franchise. Yeah. Fun franchise, yeah. What do you think Glory. about Spiral? Are you are you excited for Spiral? 
I didn't even know that. I didn't even heard, heard of it. it. It's okay. So what? Spiral is a Chris Rock reboot within oh. the song universe. I think. Yeah. Whoa. Oh, what? Oh, what? Into it. Yeah. Into yeah, it. yeah. Man. Yeah. Never heard yeah. of it. Wow. Yeah. It's a uh, there. There was a trailer that came out a few months ago. I think maybe before COVID hit. Uh, I I had seen it floating around and. Um, it was supposed. I think it was supposed to come out this year, but obviously with everything going on, it still might because uh, you know movie theaters are slowly reopening and driving theaters are a thing now. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know those are coming back. But um, that they're definitely doing. I'm not exactly sure. I don't think it's a. Uh, it's not a remake of the original Saw, but it's like Chris Rock's vision of the same universe, but with like a somewhat different story. I, I kind of don't really remember it. Sounds it, but amazing. I, oh, wow. It, it, yeah. I'm super into it's it. It's going to be awesome. And I <laughs> saw this, uh, I saw this, like, uh, this Facebook post about it with a bunch of posters that are like, oh, a uh, horror coming out uh, in the next couple of years or whatever. They're, it looks like they're remaking The Exorcist. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. I, and, I believe uh, it, yeah. I believe it. See, I'm against that. You're, yeah. See, it's... Hot take. Ooh. I mean, <laughs> elaborate. <laughs> let, let sleeping dogs lie. You know what I mean? Yeah. What about like, uh, you know, with like pop culture? I, I actually saw a tenant last night. Oh, I saw that you saw it. Dude. And I was excited for you because Christopher Nolan is one of my favorite directors of all time. Absolutely and I saw that you same. loved it. Oh, I did. It's it's wonderful. It comes out for the wide release this weekend, so you guys definitely need to see it before it gets all the spoilers oh, wow. come out because they're already out there. So stay off the internet for have, a little. Have bit. you seen one of his first movies, uh, Following? No. Um. Uh, so uh, interesting that you mentioned that. Um. In June, I went at the end of June. I went to Vegas on vacation, and my friend, who is a huge Nolan fan, he has the box set from Memento up until The Dark Knight, mm -hmm. and um. There were a couple movies that Christopher Nolan did that I did not know that he did, which mm. was Memento and Insomnia. Mm -hmm. I did not. I had no idea he did those movies. And yep. then, so because the first movie I ever saw that he did was Flutter. Batman Begins, mm -hmm. and then everything after that I obviously saw. And then, um, so when I went over there, uh, he was like, "Have you seen the movie Memento?" And I'm like, "No, I've been meaning to." And he's like, "Dude, you like Christopher Nolan, right?" I was like, "Fuck yeah!" And he's like, <laughs> "That was his first feature length film," and I was like. Put it on right now and he was like and by the way even though that movie is 20 years old one of the best movies i've ever seen like in it's my entire incredible life. absolutely that movie is fucking amazing yeah but um as far Wait, I, as i would be remiss if i don't mention one of my favorite movies of all time of his is the prestige oh like, god yeah I, people i think i don't know i feel oh, like people don't talk about it enough it is a perfect film no, really it is amazing movie. definitely yeah. is definitely is like like everybody here has seen it right yeah no Oh, oh, dude. No, All damn right. it. No. We got to get you on it, dude. Fuck. All right, for uh, October movie night with Tim. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely, that definitely fits in the realm. Um, it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> but as far as like. <laughs> it's a children's <laughs> have, have, uh, My favorite horror movie right now, and you can say it's not a horror movie because a lot of people say it's not, is Hereditary. Have you guys seen that? Ooh, uh, very well acted. Mm -hmm. That's part of why it's so terrifying is the acting is spot on. Everybody here has seen it? Yeah. No. Yeah. Where the hell are you guys finding this shit? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> All right. We got. We got to stop, dude. Oh my god. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Just here. Yeah, go it was like, room. hey. hey, hey. <laughs> No, I will say good. this. I will say this. I'm not the biggest horror movie buff when it comes to, like, I don't like being scared, but I also like being scared. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. Definitely, I fucked up watching that movie because I've watched it by myself in the middle of the night, and I was like, I couldn't sleep <laughs> for, like, two weeks, bro. Well, I would say a very, well, it's not that recent now. I think it's, like, 10 years old or something, but, like, very, I feel like our band, like, the John Candy-esque feeling movie with the contrast is um cabin in the woods Have you oh seen that? yeah yeah absolutely oh, that, yes yeah you seen it yeah is it mm -hmm. god yes. that movie Watch. was so yeah. stupid but i loved it <laughs> <laughs> no dude you hit the nail on the head it starts off scary and then it's like kind of what's going on and then by the end it's ridiculous and silly and like oh, the i end feel is like just, that's us <laughs> the the ending of that movie is so extra like i Wait, literally couldn't believe what i, I literally the, I literally only saw it once in theaters. The end is where, like, doesn't, like, the house get grabbed or stepped on by, like, a giant or something? The, is that what the happens? Very, no, if I remember, like if, I remember like the, if I remember, like, the, uh, the last frame of the movie is this giant hand coming yeah, out yeah, of the yeah, ground yeah, yeah, and yeah. just, <laughs> boom, just... <laughs> 
I'm like, what? and then it roll credits, and it's just like, are you fucking kidding me? That's how this ends. <laughs> When all of like when all of the shit gets released into the world and like Thor gets like zapped by that fucking like invisible wall, I was like, yeah. I don't, I don't know what to think of this anymore. <laughs> I feel like you would like it though because it's not too scary, right? <laughs> no, no, I, I, I still liked it even though I thought it like was scary in the beginning. You know, I still yeah, liked yeah, yeah. the movie. <laughs> Big hand. God, that movie like was me? just so silly though. <laughs> I mean, to me. Uh, I'm borderline. I need it to be like a snuff film to be like scared now. Mm. Like I like, like for me, the movies I like that are scary aren't necessarily like horror. Film. Like Green Room. Did you see Green Room? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one with Patrick Stewart, right? Yeah, but it's like it's not scary. But I'm like, you shit yourself because it's like, and oh like, my god. Like um, if I were actually in that position, I would be. Terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then uh, Anton Yel Yel Anton Yelchin was in that movie too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't, I, I watched, I came in, like, probably, like, halfway through it. My roommates were watching it, but I watched, like, the last half of it, and I was like, Jesus, fuck, what is happening? <laughs> like, this, this is, an, an, this is like, if Scott Pilgrim vs. the World was, like, a horror movie, almost, yeah. you know? <laughs> like, yeah, the director of that movie did a really good movie, too. I think it was called Blue Ruin. Blue Ruin. Is that it? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. Who, is it who is the director of it? I don't remember. I don't remember his name. I just know he okay. did both those movies. Um, I, I don't. I don't know the other movie you're talking about, though. And, and I don't even remember the the main actor in it. He's 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 been in some other stuff too. But uh, I just remember like in Blue Ruin, like the sound and the suspense building is so good. I, it's a movie I only saw once. Same with Green Room. But that yeah. whoever that director is, like his ability to build suspense and stress you the f out with like no sound, and then all of a sudden it's just like wham, something super loud happens. But it's like. It's poignant and it makes sense and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah. oh, masterful. That's how I think about like James Wan and like the Conjuring movies. Like, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. see, a lot good. of a lot of people will watch like the Conjuring and Insidious being like, those movies are stupid. They're whack. And I'm just like, are you fucking serious, bro? The first time I saw the Conjuring was like two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, uh, bro, I was shitting myself. That <laughs> yeah. movie was like, even, even. Even Insidious, like, even though that movie is, oh. like, not, like, that movie was fucking terrifying to me. Like, yeah. I don't know what you yeah. guys think of it, but oh, I, I thought it was... It, yeah. I, know, I actually never saw it. I love the first one. I don't the, remember the, I, the other ones, but I love the first one. The the first and the second one are really, really good. The third mm -hmm. one, it gets a little it starts to fall extra, off. but yeah. it starts to fall off. But I still kind of liked it, and I haven't seen the fourth one. I don't really mm -hmm. care to see the fourth one, because I'm just like, There's well, four? this is a fucking fourth What's, one. The scariest part is the song, the tiptoe through the tulips, <laughs> through the... Da, da. Like, oh, it's terrifying, dude. I dude, love it. <laughs> not even. That's where I was like, is... What is... I feel like this is a fucking episode of SpongeBob. Like, that's what I... <laughs> like... <laughs> like, well, actually, you know what's scarier than in the movie is the actual dude who sung that song. If you look it up on YouTube, I think his name's like uh -huh. Tiny Tim or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you you watch him singing that song live. It's scarier than it was in the movie. <laughs> I fucking I I don't know. Maybe I'll I'll have to look it up. But like that's a, one thing I like about Ari Aster too, the guy who did Hereditary. He, that, oh. The the way he built up suspense and mm -hmm. terror in the way that he did it, I was just like Jesus. <clears throat> fuck dude like there's like no jump scares in that movie and like oh, yeah. sorry to ruin it for you there but like <laughs> <laughs> but like just the way that he will put like, something on camera for way too long yeah something yeah. shocking and you're just yeah. like can you go away please mm -hmm. you know yeah. i fucking hated that about that movie and that's why i think i was so scared because i expected there to be something to just pop out of the corner or just like a cat's gonna run across the room and then it's just gonna be like oh i was a weak jump scare that's like, stupid <laughs> well, it's funny talking about like what eric was talking about how like what actually scares him is like needs to be like borderline snuff or something i remember when yep. he was telling me about this scene in a movie that wasn't a horror movie and this was years ago he told me and it's a fantastic movie uh <laughs> training day the part oh, yeah. where they oh have my God, Ethan great Hawk, movie, dude. yeah, Ethan Hawke in the bathtub and the shotgun, yeah. like mm -hmm. that scene, and I agree with him, <laughs> is so real. Like you just know this kind of stuff happens all the time. Yeah. That I was like, mm -hmm. I agree, that was a terrifying scene. It's not a horror movie, but that's yeah. scary yeah. as hell. Like no that's horror a fucking... movie has ever made me so on edge as that scene, and that's not even a horror movie. Really? Yeah. Like. Oh my god, Th that whole sequence of like the guy holding the shotgun of his head in the bathtub—that's like. Mm -hmm. 
Add some sus- yeah, no, that was a great scene. I actually never even thought of that. I actually need to rewatch that now. That's a fucking <laughs> amazing that movie. Yeah, this one. <laughs> <laughs> and I think for me, the scariest one, like maybe a top five movie that has like parts that scared me, like because it's really hard to scare me. Um, there was a, a, it's a, I think it's actually in Mandarin Chinese. It's called The Eye. They did an American uh-huh. American remake with Jessica Alba. I never saw it, but I heard it was terrible. But yeah. the actual, the Chinese version had like three scenes in the movie that like, if I just think of them, I get shivers down my spine. Just like, they mm-hmm. were just so well executed. The sound, like the creep factor, like, oh, so good. Did you guys ever see the remake of The Grudge, the one that came out in January? No. Neither did I. I didn't really want to. I'm like, it's probably going to suck dick. Yeah, so I didn't, even, do. <laughs> I didn't even bother <laughs> with it. Like, I'll give things a chance, but it's like, I don't know, it's hard to get me, for me to muster up to watch it because there's just so much content out there. Yeah. What about the 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 second remake of Black Christmas, the one that came out in December? I haven't seen the original or any of the or, remake. Oh, really? Okay, never yeah. mind. Okay. And it's funny I, because, like, I always said, like, you know, I did a test with my friends once, like, I don't know should do this sometime if you show me like uh, like there, there was this one youtube video it was like 50 random clips from from horror movies when, uh-huh. I, when we watched that i could tell you almost every single movie that was in those 50 clips yeah like it, i have a terrible memory but somehow i was able i'm able to pull that off i just i don't know useless knowledge dude i, I my dad has told me this ever since i was fucking six years old he goes billy you can remember a day that a movie comes out but you cannot do long division so I get you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> what's your Brent? What's your favorite scary movie? I don't. I was just thinking about that. You you showed me a few a couple years ago. I'm just I'm thinking of that one, The Ritual. That thing was freaking. Oh, crazy. the one on Netflix. Yes. Yeah, the guys in the in the forest. Yes. Yeah. Did you see that one, The Ritual? Which one? Oh, The, the ritual? ritual, bro. Yes, that was a great <laughs> fucking movie, man. This is freaking That's a great creepy, recent one. Dude. Yeah. Like we, we almost turned it off. It was like midnight. And we're like, I'm, just, I'm like, I'm kind of tired. I don't know. Let's just go to bed. <laughs> oh man. It's just oh, that's a little creepy. Like I don't know. That's have right. you guys I, I uh, randomly recommend scary yeah, movies yeah, to you guys? Yeah. 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 That, have that you guys ever? Uh, have you guys watched the show The Haunting of Hill House? Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, of course. Oh Love dude, it. Haunting of Blind yeah. Manor's coming. Dude, it comes. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. Uh, the teaser trailer is out. Did you guys see it? No. I haven't seen that no, but I need to. The teaser trailer is out. It came out yesterday right, and I was uh, I went when I went to see Tenet, I went to Vegas with my buddy for his birthday which was today. But dude, we I remember I woke up the, and the oh, first thing house. I saw on my Facebook feed was the Haunting of Blind Manor teaser and it looks awesome. No, can't wait. And it's dude, funny my- you mentioning Vegas and us talking scary. Perfect segue. To what Eric did like a month ago that did, I'm dying to do now. Did, did you go to the uh, the haunted museum in Vegas? No, I didn't even know that existed. So the the dude from Ghost Adventures. Um, oh Jesus! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He, so, <laughs> this is reaction. Yeah, cause, no, cause, cause trust me, I have the same reaction. Like, uh, you just you just he, caught you get caught in his jeans yeah. for half an hour and I, then oh that's my the God. end. <laughs> He, he's the only guy still wearing jean coats. I mean, I don't even think, I don't even think those were still around. But, uh, Did, uh, have you have you guys ever uh, have you guys ever been down to what's co- in San Diego? Have you guys ever heard of what's called the Whaley House? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Have Never you guys ever been, been to it? Yeah, dude. Wait. How fu- that is a trip. Yeah. That is like, a weird place, so man. It's in Old Town, San Diego, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like okay, the first like been. courthouse. I went during the day though. I feel like that's not nearly as scary if you go at night. Yeah. Right? Yeah, <laughs> I messed up. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I agree. I went there during the day too, but I thought it was still pretty fucking freaky, man. So in in Vegas, this dude from Ghost Adventures. So pretty much his whole life, he's been collecting just crazy stuff. Like for example, like Ted Bundy's murder kit. Um, he has what? uh dark Doctor Kevorkian's van with all the the equipment he used to you know for people to kill themselves he he has Holy everything shit. from he has everything from his office so you go into a room that's a recreation of his office uh, down to his desk his chair his books um he's got the real annabelle doll he's got just the real one yeah, and, and so you just walk around this house in oh the dark God. and the 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 dark the house was um I guess they tell you there that his friend is the set designer for American Horror Story. So visually, oh. the, the the museum is awesome. 
And so Fuck. for like two hours, you're walking around this house, and I've never, I've, like my wife and I have been to Europe, and we always go to like haunted exhibits. Here, I love going to haunted places. I've never experienced a thing. In that museum, I felt something push my back. I yeah, felt, I'm not going. I felt like <laughs> someone had shifted the floor from under my feet. Um, the whole time, I felt like there was like someone pushing down on my chest and I couldn't breathe no. as well. And literally the second mm-hmm. you leave, it all goes away. Like, dude, <laughs> dude, no, bye. And, I literally, and, okay. And, and, and. Okay. It, it, so, so I, I, I will say it's the best museum I've ever been to. <laughs> that's cool. No, I'm definitely not going, but I maybe, <laughs> maybe. So let, let me just put it to you in perspective, how much of a pussy I am. The, the, the first time I ever went to not scary farm was, 2006 and that's the only time i've ever gone (laughs) and uh so they that was when the grudge 2 i think was out i believe yeah yeah and so i saw that movie in theaters scared the actual shit out of me um that fucking bitch that's uh, don't like her (laughs) i don't like her at all uh so me and my girlfriend at the time we we went to the the grudge maze that they had there and she was in front of me and I put, I like grabbed onto her in front of me as a shield. And I'm like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's get the fuck out of here. Like, I'm not dealing with this shit. And like, I guess rule number one, when you go through a, a, a maze like that is don't look scared. Cause they'll scare the shit oh, out of yeah, you. Yeah, and bro. that yeah. happened. Dude, he used to not scary it. farm alumni. <laughs> oh, really? You probably scared the shit out of me. Yeah. Then. Cause that was also the time. <laughs> That was also the time where I don't I don't know if they uh, consistently kept doing this because I haven't been since. But um, that w- I think that was like the first year they had like the dudes with like the chainsaws running around. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do they do they still do that? I don't think they do that. But the maze I was in, I had a chainsaw. Blood Bayou. What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> what maze did you do? Uh, Blood Bayou. Oh. This was back in like 2004. I was 2002, 2003, 2004. Three, oh, okay, so years. you definitely so you definitely didn't scare me then. No. <laughs> yeah, I probably would have oh man, that that shit it's Ghost sweet, Rider in fun. the Yeah. It's yeah, awesome. no. I mean it was still fun. I had a good time, but like, you know, Ghost Rider in the Dark, that was a good time and shit yeah. like that. That you know what's a real bummer is that okay, like I, I love Halloween, you know, it's one of my favorite holidays. Um it's not I'm not like super basic about it. I'm not the type of guy that posts three hundred and sixty five days till next year's Halloween, the day <laughs> after, you know. I'm not like that. <laughs> Uh, I definitely love the season, though. A tradition of mine is um, if I'm not doing anything, like going to a party, one of my favorite things to do is to watch Sleepy Hollow, Tim Burton's Sleepy oh, yeah. Hollow. Oh, Johnny yeah. Depp. That's a good one. That's, that's an my, awesome one. That's my, that's my all-time favorite movie to watch on Halloween. Um, but uh, one of the... Fuck, I forgot where I was going with this. Never mind. <laughs> well, yeah, Tim, I, I, I love Tim Burton. I Actually, my wife and I went to a uh, Tim Burton exhibit at the LACMA uh, in L.A., Maybe it was like oh, dude, it, was yeah. a, it was like eight years ago or something, but it was amazing. Like all stuff yeah. from the movies and all of his personal art. It was amazing. I remember that. Rad. I wanted to fucking go to that. Um, but no, actually, I I kind of remembered why I was going with this. Is that uh, it's a real bummer that I I'm seeing for the first time in my years of living on this earth that not Scary Farm and Universal Horror Nights are not going to be going on this year, and that is just honestly like I feel horrible for all of my friends who look forward to going to that oh, every year and now oh, this year horrible. they fucking can't dude yeah. mm-hmm. like like tim and i whenever we talk whenever we've been talking you know the last few months since the thing started uh since the pandemic started is like he is very very strict and he's like no one's coming to my house i'm not going anywhere and it sucks because our mm. annual traditions that we used to do are now going to be either a put on hold or Maybe not, depending on how, you know, the future holds. I don't really know. But it's just a bummer that, like, things that people are looking forward to, especially within the fall holiday seasons, is not going to be a thing anymore. Like, is that something that you guys are a fan of? Like, do you guys go every year? Like, what's Oh, the... dude, you're cutting out like crazy again. Fuck! <laughs> Wait, that came in clear. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was super clear. <laughs> and now you're perfect again. There you go. Yay, all right, all right, cool. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you guys, like, yeah, your traditions and... Yeah, your religion, like, yeah. What, what, what is your guys' like, annual, like, you know, holiday traditions when it comes to Halloween mm-hmm. and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I mean, me, it was, like, the same kind of stuff. Like, ha- haunt, haunt, we do haunt like, all the time. Yeah, yeah Universal. Horror Nights. Yeah. Ha- yeah, like, 
and you're right. There's like, you know, you don't put it in perspective. Like, there are people who literally wait the entire year just for this, and now it, it's gone. It's gone, dude. It's yeah, fucking the sad. People that work there, dude, they look forward to this. Oh. They're a whole different breed. It's so crazy. Oh yeah, like <laughs> like, like I, the lifers, not like me, where I'm like, I'm just gonna try it, do it a few years. Like there's guys oh, that are dude. like. Please tell the story years about deep the vampire that are working there. The pigeon. <laughs> huh? Tell the story about the pigeon guy. The ma- oh, yeah. There was a vampire maze in the early 2000s called Lord of the Vampire. And everybody that worked in there, I swear to God, they thought they were like real vampires. They draw like their nails out. This dude, like Nazis used to have like a, a birdcage with like pigeons in it. And like we we're all walking to our maze and like an hour before the dude would just be sitting there like... Like, I don't know, talking to these birds, and we're like, what the <laughs> heck is this guy doing, dude? And he's got, like, his cape on already, the white makeup, and he'd, like, look over at you all weird, and we're like, okay. <laughs> they're, they're a different breed, man. It's crazy. The no, I bet. Dude, I have a, I have a buddy who, who works a, a normal job every, you know, he has his normal job, but every Halloween that comes around, he is part of haunt every single year he yeah. has the most fun doing it and he's like this is the first year where i can't fucking do it and it's it crushed him dude. oh yeah yeah yeah, totally and yeah. like it, you know it sucks because i don't know what it's gonna be like in the future again like i don't know if movie theaters will still be open like you know when i went to go see tenet it was the weirdest most surreal thing dude like walking into an actual theater smelling popcorn sitting down in a chair reclining <laughs> that shit back and being like yeah. yep. holy fuck the last movie i saw before the pandemic was birds of prey and that was in february what man so yeah. what is september so yesterday was august that was fucking six, six months. months dude yeah. mm-hmm. that's the longest i have ever gone without watching a movie that's crazy. and like and like dude like so many like cool movies are supposed to be coming out and like they're just not like yeah we're getting them on like amazon for like vod and all that kind of shit but it just the the spooky season there's so there's a like last year i think it was last year when did when did the the halloween remake oh no that was two years ago uh the one with the you oh, know the, yeah, the newest when, one when jamie lee curtis came back yeah yeah, yeah. when she came back yeah mm-hmm. so i remember going to see halloween like the day, I think it was either the day before or the day after actual Halloween. I don't remember. But there's a, you know, there's a specific vibe to that season. And it's a huge bummer that this, that this fucking pandemic is going on because we're just missing out on traditions that we all have with our friends. And now we just can't have it. But Yeah, um, absolutely. Real quick, I just want to wrap this up real quick. You guys are a fucking blast to talk to. I, I, <laughs> yeah, same, dude. Dude, you guys are fucking awesome. Where the fuck is Eric? <laughs> I think he just ducked out to take a whiz, probably. <laughs> this guy, dude. guy, dude. This guy and his peeing. Uh. <laughs> no, but uh, uh. real quick, if you guys wouldn't mind, uh, for those who are watching this or listening to this, uh, can you guys just real quick give your guys' uh, plug, your social medias, your all that and all that jazz? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, we're Instagram.com slash the John Candy, Facebook.com slash the John Candy. We have pretty much all the major slash John Candies. At the John Candy. Yeah, yeah, the Instagram is at the John Candy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're on all the major streaming services, Spotify, Apple Music, SoundCloud, kind of you name it, YouTube. Um, yeah, that's, that's all of our stuff, and we're just uh, out here recording and just making stuff we love, and... Um, we're currently working on our second full length to, to, it's actually kind of this weird, funny goal that we have to release now because of the pandemic and the world being what it is right now, two full lengths in one year, which I feel like is just super crazy and and weird to do, but we're like, like, yeah, let's just do it. Like what the hell? Like Eric's a writing machine and he's making tons of music. So I'm writing lyrics and Brent's like pumping ideas and. Uh, we're just like, let's just do it. So, yeah, we'll have a second. Oh, he was grabbing more beers, I oh, think. Oh. <laughs> I thought he was peeing. Or maybe that was like that, that was his cover. I did both. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, we can actually open them on the wall right here. Oh, all right. Um, right so, yeah, so we're going to do a second. Here, Brent. Wait, let's see. Oh. Yeah, got it. There you go. Thank you. Nice, dude. So, yeah, so we're going to... Um, so it's 28 Samples Later is our, our new album. Our actual album we, we already released in February is called Orange County. It was our yeah. tribute to uh, all that is uh, all that is Orange County, us being into, into bands like Bleeding Through and 18 Visions and Throwdown and Death by Stereo. Yes. 
all these great. bands that we were always we were super into back in the early 2000s so it was like our tribute like those bands made orange county a scene and we were like we want to just like just do a tribute to that that's why we called our last album orange county but okay, okay. never 28... never too old never too young for moshing it up and singing along damn straight <laughs> damn straight that's exactly from throwdown dude <laughs> that's a throwdown quote no and so um 28 samples later like we came up with that idea because eric was like playing with the idea of doing 28 days later quarantine fantastic horror movie obviously yes and, wonderful and, yeah we're listening let's play off that with the theme of the album the, the cover art um and it's just basically an album of like kind of half humor half just pissed off frustrated about the state of the world the state of quarantine the state of the virus the state of politics just everything it's it's kind of like an amalgamation of all of that and uh we're probably going to be releasing that album here probably in two or three months we've released two singles uh, we're gonna do another single here in a couple weeks, and then we have uh, a video with Tim. Yeah, we're, we're actually gonna be doing a video. So tying this whole back full circle to our love of horror, we uh, and we're, Tim. We're, yeah, and we're, what is it? And our tying love it of back Tim? to Tim. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> I said and tying it back to Tim. Tying it back to Tim too. Uh, we're gonna go uh, just to a bunch of different random spots uh, in a couple weeks here in, in downtown LA, around the you know the greater LA area, and mm -hmm. just film around like a, iconic horror movie spots. Okay. Um, yeah. you know, the houses and whatnot, and splice that all together with footage from the you know two shows we've played, and to make a music video for the album for a Psycho song that Eric is making, like the actual horror movie, the uh, Alfred Hitchcock movie Psycho. Okay, um, so we're gonna bring all this together. Tim's gonna come with us and film all that. <laughs> Hell yeah, great fucking choice. I want to ask real quick: Have you guys watched the show Bates Motel? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We have it. What was it? Bates Motel. Oh, oh, I yeah. did it! Oh, did you, really, oh, yeah, we love that. Yeah, it's really good. Oh yeah. my god, dude, you gotta watch it. That yeah. show, fucking hook, <laughs> got yeah. me, dude. That show was fantastic. Yeah, it was really good. My wife awesome. watched it. And she loved it. So yeah. I think it's, I need it's, to. It's fucking amazing, dude. It's literally one of the best shows I've ever watched on yeah. television. Norman's so creepy. And yeah. it's funny you say that best show on television. One of the best I've seen in recent years, horror related, Hannibal. Did oh, you ever watch Hannibal? I'm, just oh, Hannibal. I'm actually oh, currently watch watching it right now. I'm in the first season, episode Dude. like eight or nine or something. Oh, like how that. that show aired on like primetime whatever NBC, TV is yeah. mind blowing. Crazy. It Bro, is there was so a... violent and so insane. <laughs> Bro, there are seriously so many scenes in that show where I have to look away. I'm like, that's <laughs> fucking disgusting. Mm -hmm. Like the scene, I, I think it's in episode four or episode five of season one, where the three people like the blood eagle like over the oh, bed yeah. i was like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. how the fuck did they just show that yep yeah but and that it, but but i love it i'm only episode like eight or nine maybe like 10 or something like that i don't exactly remember where and speaking of horror uh, show well not horror shows but violent shows and good shows which i think yep. you watch the boys oh my god yeah dude dude okay i'm just gonna say <laughs> i'm so sick of comic book stuff but the boys uh -huh. brought me back in like they do that spin, shit it's so violent and hilarious and uh, just a bunch of degenerates and it's like it's so good like in the oh, second dude. season starts soon it's it starts on the fourth which is i think is friday so yeah, yeah. dude i Can't fucking wait. love that show that Can that show is like no, is one on? of the best it's on amazon it's on amazon prime, prime. okay uh, yeah i watched yeah, it's tread fucking today. great would you watch tread oh oh we watched it last yeah, night yeah, yeah. yeah uh, what is it documentary called tread yeah we're just we don't want to plug the band we're just gonna plug <laughs> random fucking shows that we watch <laughs> Uh, Fred, it's a documentary on Netflix about mm -hmm. a guy in summation, a guy who basically feels like it's him against the world, um, and he builds like a tank out of like a uh, a tractor essentially, yeah, and okay. goes on a rampage through Destroying a city. His this is real life though; it's a documentary uh, okay. in Colorado, in Granby, Colorado. Yeah. Uh, he reinforces it with steel plating he has cameras installed on it he has like gun ports on it and he just destroys the entire oh, town right. and i can't yeah. believe i never heard of it uh before watching actually i listened to a podcast about it time suck with dan cummins amazing podcast <laughs> another plug uh, yeah another plug <laughs> <laughs> um i learned about their first and then i saw the documentary on netflix and it's just it is a bonkers story and the reason you've probably never heard of it is, is because ronald reagan died the day after it happened and oh, it got shit. swallowed up in the whole yeah. news thing. They say that wow. at the end. Wow. I mean, like, I'm definitely down to watch all of that shit. But uh, definitely loved talking to you guys. I'm going to wrap this up here. You guys are fucking great. I hope one day we can actually hang out. Like, <laughs> that would be awesome. No, you're great. 
You're yeah, great. Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank you. I appreciate no, that. No, thank cheers you, Billy. Yeah, cheers, dude. Yeah. It was really nice Please, meeting please. you and doing this. We Absolutely, definitely need to hang dudes. out in real life. Absolutely. Absolutely, dudes. I'll hit you guys up soon. And uh, let me know when you guys are uh, releasing uh, a Happy Gilmore song. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's coming. Actually, before before we go, real quick, can you give us? I know I probably just did that on. I spoiled one of the songs for you. Can you guys like just give me and my listeners here a kind of like a, I guess like a little tease of what songs and what movies you guys are going to be referencing uh, in your next yeah. stuff. Uh, I mean. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Yeah, so we got Happy Gilmore. Oh, yeah. happy, happy Gilmore. Wayne's World. Okay. Um, <laughs> Rookie of the Year. Oh my God! Um, yes, mm-hmm. Crocodile Dundee. Crocodile Dundee. Uh, that's like that's gonna be our Australia anthem. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jing, jingle all the way. Christmas, oh fuck yeah, dude! <laughs> Christmas it's turbo story. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Christmas story. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Yeah, you got the savant memory, dude. Yeah. Like, you got almost all of them uh, already. Hold on. What well, the Air problem heads. is. Oh, airheads! Yep, yep. Uh, okay. Uh, heavyweights. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, and now the one I made today is kind of just like the grab bag of horror movies. So it has like the thing. Um, My has, favorite horror movie of all time is the thing. By the way. Okay. So it has the thing, Nightmare on Elm Street, Psycho. Um, what else? The Fog. The Blob. Okay. Uh, yeah, the Blob. <laughs> sure. Wait, Billy, have you ever seen the thing? <clears throat> um, I've Kurt, seen Kurt bits Russell. and pieces of it. Yes, Kurt, dude, I, I've seen the bits and pieces of that what one. Yes, thing, right? it is like it is a testament <laughs> to how, why practical effects are so important because yeah. the practical effects in that movie are so creepy and gross and amazing that it's just like it just puts the movie yeah, to like another level. What's funny? Oh, is- I remember. I saw it. I saw like bits and pieces of it at, as like a very young kid at my grandparents' house, yeah, and it same. scarred me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what were you gonna say? I was gonna say it's funny that he mentioned Happy Gilmore, and I still forgot to mention it. Like mm-hmm. I still, I still forgot. That one. Like that is like Dude. when when uh I think I was talking to who 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 is on the the band Instagram. That's pretty much always me. Yeah. Pretty much always you. So when when you mentioned that that was one you were doing, I was like, I literally cannot wait for that because much like Dumb and Dumber, I can almost recite that entire movie dude dumb and dumber my number one comedy of all time happy gilmore is a very close number two very close second yes i agree and i i i might have mentioned to it when you and i were talking but um uh, shooter mcgavin is one of the best um yeah antagonists ever created like just <laughs> oh, such yeah. a shithead and you'd love he's to hate him he's such an asshole i yeah. fucking hate he's him he's the best and just like uh, Glenn Gulia from The Wedding Singer, he's very hateable too. Very, very much. <laughs> Your last name's Gulia. Yeah, what's so funny about that? <laughs> oh, dude, good stuff. But yeah, it's been a it's been a fucking absolute pleasure. I definitely will try to hang out with you guys sometime soon. Hopefully, soon enough to where I can hang out with you guys and Tim, and we can just all nerd out. Totally, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it, man. All right, dudes. Well, I will definitely talk to you guys later. I'll probably see you guys on Instagram, and it's been honestly a real pleasure. I I really appreciate you guys taking the time for this. Thank Same. You. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks dude. For doing this. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 I'll see you guys later. All right. Later. Peace all right. out. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Peace.